Okay, all my interested YouTube viewers, I'm back with the second part of my video explaining um, the fourth and final game console controller adapter to PC device that I own. And this one here is, as I described in the first video, a very special device. It is not one that you can buy in an online store, or perhaps even if you live in China or Taiwan, maybe in a local store. Uh, walk-in store. Uh, maybe there's some other specialty stores that do sell these, those other uh, USB devices. But these, this device here and these other ones like this are actually custom built. And I built this one. I didn't design the specs or anything like that. Those were put online years, many years ago, over 10 years ago online um, during the Windows 95 era when emulation was very new. And they were put online. Uh, I think the schematic was first made by um, and implemented into a driver by someone who made a DOS-based um, console to computer uh, to PC configuration device, and that was called SNES Key. It supported a lot more than just SNES, but I guess at first the maker of it only supported SNES. Maybe there was a history to it behind why it's called SNES Key. I'm not sure. The next um, an improvement over that for Windows, um, a person made a driver could give you the brief history d-pad pro which was really nice it enabled a device like um, the one I built to be used as a uh, Windows driver so it was you know found through DirectX through the um, the control panel in Windows um, you know 98 I was using at that time and it worked great for Windows 98 it's a great driver however with the it did not work in Windows NT and with the at advent of Windows 2000 where the NT architecture took over from uh, the native version of Windows, Windows 2000 uh, and Windows XP. The um, DirectPad Pro driver does not did not work. So right now I'm running a Windows XP computer. I cannot use the DirectPad Pro driver. There is however a follow-up to that called actually there was a few follow-ups. Um, one I think is made by an Argentinian programmer. I never got that thing to work. I've always had a great deal of difficulty Another one was made by a Japanese program. It seems similar. Uh, again, I never had that one to work. I don't know if one is a hack of the other. No clue. Uh, really, they seem similar. Neither one ever functioned right. But there's another one called PP Joy. There's a lot of discussion online about um, SNES, uh, D-Pad Pro and how it's discontinued and how you should use this Japanese or this Argentinian program that don't seem to work. There isn't much discussion on PP Joy, and when it is, it, it seems like it's not described very well. Well, PP Joy is, to me, the, uh, in my opinion, the proper follow-up to D-Pad Pro, and for users of Windows 2000 and XP, I highly suggest it. There is also a PP Joy. Either it's, I don't know if it's working now or it's in process of being developed by the original author of the other PP Joy for that works with 2000 and XP. That's supposed to work on Vista and Seven. I haven't been able. Actually, I downloaded it. I wasn't able to get it to work on my XP machine, and no surprise, I think it's uniquely or exclusively for Vista and 7, so it won't work for XP. So I couldn't test it, um, but the program to look into is called PP Joy. That's the letter P, and the letter P, and then the word Joy as in joystick, so five letters. Definitely look that driver up, uh, that, and it is extremely good. It is the same wiring schematic that's, that was started with SNES key, it's compatible with D-Pad Pro, and it's compatible with uh, compatible with PP Joy. Now, SNES Key also supported a lot more controllers. Uh, I'm not sure how many of those D-Pad Pro continue to support, and I'm not sure how many of them PP Joy in turn uh, support. But all of them do support the Super Nintendo um, schematic and that uh, that wiring system. I think they all support Genesis, and um, I'm not sure about the other controllers. So I think you could connect a uh, and then 64 control, although it was a lot of work, you had to, um, a lot more work, you had to use transistors in it. And um, I think there was another, another, but I, I forget, what was the other one? Um, oh, the Atari 2600 driving control, which I actually bought, I wanted to make a device for that, but I never got around to it. Um, there's supposedly a device called Stella Adapter, which I'm going to be buying someday, and maybe I'll make a video of it if I happen to have a camcorder at the time that I buy such a device and if I do buy it uh, I'd like to but I'll get to the, maybe I'll get to that in another time anyhow this is the device I showed in the last video 
And by the way, this button does nothing. It's solely cosmetic. It did something at one time when it was connected. When it was connectable to the Super Nintendo, which by the way, I do have another one. I bought these for the sake of hacking. Now I got them really cheap. I think from Walmart years ago when Super Nintendo was just, you know, like 97, 96, and then probably more like, no, actually I bought these in 1999, maybe even 2000. I got these way later, yeah, when Super Nintendo was just way out, but there was still stock left of this stuff and it was selling cheap. Maybe I bought this for four, three, five dollars, you know, not much money, and, um, you know, performance is probably a piece of garbage. But it doesn't matter, I just want the shell, and I want these connectors. Now this is the actual one for Super Nintendo. This is unhacked, there is a circuit board in here. This switch does something. Um, the way the Super Multitap used to work is you'd plug this thing into the way the Bomberman one worked, which I owned. You'd plug this into the second port. The first port would go to the first controller, and then the second controller would plug here, the third here, the fourth here, the fifth here. And you can select from two to, and if you wanted two, just two players, you'd, you'd have that switch. And if you wanted to use the extended capability, you do that. And that's just how these Super Multitap made by uh, Hudson and included with Super Bomberman uh, in the US that pack uh, worked as well, worked the same way. And it, it looked different. It was actually a bigger, longer strip. And, um, it, you know, it's nicely made. This thing actually does not look bad at all. It's actually smaller. And in, many, in certain ways, it looks nicer. Um, but uh, I don't know. I just had this to show this to show all the devices. I never packed this one into another device. I actually have another one of these that I made with a different kind of multi-tap, which I'd like to show all of you. I'll maybe bring that out at the end of this video. But I have a lot to cover on this video. And the first uh, I'm not gonna show you how to load the driver. But the driver's low. Actually I'll show you a little bit of it. Um, here's the actual driver, PP Joy. Excuse my throat. Uh, PP Joy right here. You can see the PP Joy folder. And these are the PP Joy files. Let me zoom in. And this um, this setup program, this setup file here, is what launches it and in, in, uh, configures it with Windows. And right now, I just did a little more work. If you saw my other videos, I go to the control panel and I go to game controllers. And you saw probably before too. And I'm gonna move this over so you can read it. Before I had just two of these LTP3 Direct Pad Pro slash SNES key, SNES or S NES pads, pad one. I only had one of these, um, these visible. Uh, now I have four because I actually added two more because this device, let me zoom out, can support four controllers. Now, of course, there's number two, three, four, and five, but if you minus one on each, you'll have the controllers. This is the first controller, this is the second, this is the third, this is the fourth. That's how I wired them. Uh, I'm not going to go into the wiring schematic. They each have a unique wire and such. This is actually Cat5 with eight wires, and the eight wires allow for four controllers. Eight, eight wires, you know, because you, I'm not going to get into the wiring anyway. But I have a lot to cover here because I have a lot of controllers to Super Nintendo, a lot of diverse ones. Let me stand up and show you. And I got another bonus one at the end. Now, this is not a controller here. I'm going to have to take that away because I'm done with that. But um, this is what I'm going to be showcasing in this video with this device. All of these controllers work with this device, I think. I think this one works too. I'm not sure actually, but I think it does. All of the rest definitely work, including this, the power plug, which is very, very, a very, very cool addition uh, to the Super Nintendo, and it does work with this, surprisingly. I was very surprised. I tested it recently. I wasn't, I had, didn't get it to work before. Uh, I think when I Maybe when I built these, I, I tried another one. I had the, like I showed that 5-volt connecting to the PC. I think that's what made the difference, that extra power. So we're going to try different things with these controls. I'm just going to demonstrate to you how this works. So the first thing we're going to do is just survey these. I'm going to survey these controls. Actually, I'm not going to survey this. I'll survey these controls just a little bit. These two here are actually the same. They're not unique. These are both Super the original Super Nintendo controllers. Um, just to give you a brief history of my controllers here. Um, had when I was younger and I had the Super Nintendo. I liked to, to have most, spend most of my money on new games. I didn't do much with controllers, so, you know, I had two controllers that came with them. Never bought any more, and one of them broke, and I just threw it away, and this is the second one that worked, and you see there's a lot of wires exposed, but the thing works. Uh, it was very cheap when it came to controllers. I wanted to spend money on games, because there's a new exciting game coming out, and this thing worked, and it'll work. When I... And with the ended with the Genesis, um, I had one controller. I think only one working controller. 
the three button control that I had it came with when I got it with Sonic 1 didn't work. I think I threw it away. I had a, another controller. I had some other controllers, some other three button, like a striker, which is an awesome three button controller. That broke, threw it away. Um, and then I just had one six button um, by Interact, which I uh, talked about. I had one for Saturn. I had the, the, that version for Genesis. So I didn't do deal much with controllers in the uh, my uh, younger days of gaming. I got much more into it with emulation. And of course, the prices went down a great deal, and prices of video games had went down a great deal at that time. So it was much more um, inexpensive to do this to do this kind of hobby, and a lot more fun. And I had and I wasn't spending money on games because I got all the ROMs. I just need to spend money on controls a lot cheaper. So here is the uh, here's the plug, and I can plug it in. This controller is fully functional, by the way. So I'm going to go ahead and, and plug it in. The other controller, this is like a brand new one I had bought years later. I'll, I think Walmart really cheaply. Um, this is a Super Nintendo original controller. You see the L and R aren't um, uh, colored in the L and R, but this is made by Nintendo. It's a totally official. You see, it is it is a little different. It's a Nintendo here instead of Super Nintendo at the top. It's actually uh, etched in, um, and this is just painted on. So it is a different looking controller. This is definitely a later generation. This is the original. That came with the system, and I, I got the system when it first came out. So this is this is that old. This is from 1991. So this is a um, a 20-year-old controller here. So I plug it in, and it was you know used in the early days when I played with it. So now let me connect. I'll, I'll skip that since you know I already have an instance of that. This is an extremely good controller. Um, at this era, in the 16-bit era, the third-party controller, actually, even just earlier, before the 32-bit era, before the PlayStation or Saturn and Nintendo 64 era of gaming, um, third-party controllers were not considered always worse than the first-party controllers. In fact, in many times, they were better. And this is one that was better. This is actually better than the original Super Nintendo controller. Every single button here has its own um, its ability to have turbo or auto, and these switches are very, very responsive. Very easy to get to the middle, unlike that horrible controller by Interact for Saturn. Horrible controller. Um, this is very responsive. This button may be stuck. I mean, this has been sitting for years. Now it's fine. Just had to get it on. Just had to loosen it up a little bit. But. Um, This one might be a little. Yeah, it seems all right. But these are, you know, that one's a little get a little get stuck for whatever reason. But the rest work fine. Slow motion. And this control, just the shape. I mean, excellent, excellent control. It's just like a Super Nintendo control, a little different shape, and it has all these turbo. All this, all this rapid fire and auto fire capability on every button. Distinct, distinctly, extremely good controller. If you if you have a Super Nintendo and you want a control another controller and you only want the only want the first the, the first party the third party suck now. The ASCII pad is extremely good. I highly recommend it. Don't don't fall for that kind of uh, uh, a lie. They were very good third party controls. And here's a here's a funny third party controller. I'll plug this one in. The Turbo Touch 360. I bought one of these recently at the flea market. I never owned this. It always looked stupid to me, and it is not a good controller. I'll just give you an example of why. It's not even so much because there's no feedback. When you push this, you have to, you have to push this thing, and you don't know when you're pushing because it doesn't really feedback. You look at the screen, you'll know what you're doing, but it doesn't really. You don't always know where your finger is. I mean, I guess you can get sensitive. These little uh, build sensitivity. These little. Um, uh, raised piece, raised sections here, but uh, it's just a very hard controller to know what where you what you're doing, and on top of that, you have to put your thumb down into it. Now, this controller was advertised as something that would save your thumb, and you know you'd get a lot more out without having to try as hard. And it's just it's harder because you have to put your th dig your thumb into this thing, and, like you're bumping the sides, and it, it's more uncomfortable to me. 
I tried it and it's more uncomfortable. This thing should not be raised up like this. It's a really bad design if this was raised up because then your your finger goes.